Hi again, everybody, and welcome into Bullerton, California, as we get ready for kickoff. It is LAFC 2 playing host to Houston Dynamo 2. These two teams have already met this season. That was on April 16th. Nil-nil draw, and then Houston Dynamo 2 for one win in PKs. As you take a look at the table in the Western Conference, Houston trying to keep pace for the top of the league right now, sitting in the five slot. LAFC 2 has just one win this season, but they're unbeaten in their last three, starting to find their form as they look to make a mid-season charge up the Western Conference standings in this matchup between these two clubs that are playing critical matches with the first team in the CONCACAF Champions League for LAFC and Houston Dynamo in the U.S. Open Cup quarterfinals at the first team level. LAFC 2 getting ready here on this pitch, their home pitch. They're the only team in MLS Next Pro without a home win this season. And LAFC 2 hosting Houston Dynamo 2 will have this starting 11 out there. A 4-3-3 for Enrique Duran. Nate Ordaz gets the start up top. The 18-year-old will be flanked by Christian Torres and Julian Gaines for LAFC 2 in this contest. And should be a fascinating one to see if this team can find some goal scoring prowess. Just six goals scored this season. Fewest in the league. Houston Dynamo 2 on the other side. Likewise, a 4-3-3 formation. Zeke Soto at the top. He's a 16-year-old at the top of this formation. Flanked by Gonzalez and Endoy. And Xavier Valdez, the 19-year-old, is in net for Houston Dynamo 2 that has been a quick starter. Nine goals in the first half this season. This June, MLS Next Pro is happy to celebrate Pride Month and support our LGBTQ fans and community. The beautiful game is for everyone. And we're ready to get ready to roll here from this facility on the University campus of Cal State Fullerton. LAFC 2 will be out in the black uniforms with the gold accents and the keeper in this matchup for LAFC 2. Jassim Pulilat will be wearing the all green tops, bottoms, and socks. Houston Dynamo 2 will have the orange tops, bottoms, and socks on with black accents. And the keeper, Xavier Valdez, light blue top, royal blue shorts, and royal blue socks for Dynamo 2 as we're ready to roll here in this matchup. This is a Dynamo 2 club that has won three of its last five. LAFC 2 unbeaten in its last three. These two teams, huge contrast in terms of their penalty kick prowess. LAFC 2 has dropped four PK shootouts after draws, while Houston Dynamo 2 has won two, including the first matchup this season on April 16th. What gives here today? We're gonna find out over the next 90 minutes. I'm Michael Watrang with our entire crew. Hope you can come in and stay a while with us here on MLSNextPro.com. Two matches in the books last night, one already in the book today. And this is the final match of this Saturday as we're ready to roll here from Titan Stadium. Michael Zapata checks with his fourth official. Make sure everybody's on the same page. And this matchup between HD2 and LAFC2 is underway on a Saturday evening. And let's see how these two teams come out. Conversation with both coaches. Quick starts, critical to success here this evening. Between these clubs, Enrique Duran in fact, talking about the fact that he wants his team to find a very fast start in this contest. The team 
Hamilton scored just six times this year, has to improve their goal scoring ability. On the other side, Kenny Bundy talked about his group playing well here on the road. He wanted to see his team continue to finish the opportunities that they're given. Juarez is trying to find Endoy. Instead gives it away and Endoy the last man to touch it. These sides unbeaten in their last three. Dynamo Dove has scored multiple goals in their stretch of three straight unbeaten. In fact, they've outscored their foes eight to three. This ball played through the middle and a foul whistled. Excellent take there from Julian Gaines. And a free kick was quickly taken, but not in the right place. Both coaches talked about the desire to develop winners. And Enrique Duran, after spending last year with Las Vegas in the USL Championship, now working here with LAFC2, a team that Despite the fact that they've only scored six goals this year, they've only conceded 10. A couple clean sheets, fourth fewest in the league. They've faced the fourth fewest, or they faced the fewest shots on target as well this year. Romero. Endoy does well to hold play up. Big body, spin around a defender. He was the last man to touch it. Endoy, the native of Senegal. Played collegiately at SMU. Pinged around before it nestles into that Yoiha. August plays it back. There's the keeper, Xavier Valdez. Six clean sheets last year. So far, none on his tally. This year, the native of Yonkers, New York. Dynamo Dose will look to build out of the back. But a giveaway, Jaime. It's a nice atmosphere here at Titan Stadium and an excellent early evening hours. Beautiful game. Vila plays it back. He's a 23-year-old keeper from the United Arab Emirates. Romero fouled by Endoy. A lot of activity currently going on on this side of the field. Certainly an MLS Next Pro. Both coaches emphasizing the fact that development is critical for these sides, but also they want to see is they want to see not just the development tactically and from a physical perspective, but they want to see their players learn from mistakes and challenges that they've had throughout this season. Maples tracks it down, sends it back to Valdez. Maldos in the stretch of five out of seven on the road. Won one, lost one, and drawn one through their first three of this period. And there's an interception. Torres into the box. Torres was trying to pick out the top corner. And it goes high and wide on the first chance of the game for either side. LAFC's Christian Torres, the 19-year-old from Mexico. Nearly had an early deposit. It's a rare mistake by one of the better defensive units. In MLS Next Pro. And there's a foul. Well, certainly one of the conversations that Enrique Duran and I had this week, going back to that last play from Torres, is he mentioned specifically there are some plays that you cannot replicate in a game setting that you can that you can't do during training. And that might be one of those plays from Torres. A play that in training you might finish with a high frequency, but you put it into a game situation, the game speed. It's always going to be a tough angle to put it on frame. 
or to put it into the net, but one perhaps to be on frame. And Coach Duran said that we're still creating chances, and that one evident right there from Torres, who does have a goal this season, coming in last week's matchup with Tacoma. Long ball sent forward, nobody in particular. Valdez will pluck it out. <laughs> Very nice move to get around a defender. And the flag up here for offside. Looked like Dolan Meyer had it covered. Regardless, it'll be a free kick instead for LAFC 2. Just three goals scored here on the home pitch. For Los Angeles this season. Seventh minute of play and a scoreless effort so far. Torres had that chance in the fifth minute. Away from the FC2 and a big one for the first team tomorrow against Club Lyon. Trailing 2 1 on aggregate in the CONCACAF Champions League final. A spot in the 2023 and 2025 FIFA Club World Cup on the line in that dramatic 96th minute goal. Makes things interesting moving into tomorrow. Second unit trying to come away with their second win in three matches. Romero has plenty of options forward. Instead, ball goes backwards. Chunked along right back for Romero. Who does he pick out here? Romero does very well. With the defense stout from Jathan Juarez. Juarez at 20 years of age. Excellent defender. Give away. Diego Gonzalez couldn't hold on to it long enough. Well, the keys to the recent success for Houston, according to Kenny Bundy, he said that there were winnable games at the beginning. Scoring the first goal frequently, but not the second goal. There's been work with the defensive transition. And he said that points have built their confidence. Team has been more calm. They started to score second phase chances, including their second goal against Austin. Couple all that together. And eight goals over the last three. Take another look at the foul. Diego Rosales committing one as well as getting shown a yellow card. Tenth minute yellow against Rosales. Free kick that will miss everybody and go out of play. For one shot coming from Christian Torres off of a giveaway in the fifth minute that missed the cage. Modos has consistently played it back to Valdez. This ball once again conceded back to LAFC 2. But Yoha fouled. Quick restart. Into the box goes Gaines. Fine defensive work, but held up by Jaime. Not out of trouble yet. Misostomo. LAFC gains form once again. 
Terry Stostomo, 25-year-old from San Francisco, loops this ball in. Valdez is there waiting as gains the target. There's another giveaway near the 18-yard box. Gaines was the intended man to try to get it back, but Yoha, the 20-year-old from Ecuador, too heavy on the pass. Didn't have the angle either. Dordaz and company making that play forward. Houston have given the ball away a couple times in dangerous locations. It hasn't cost them at this point. One ball sent down the yard. Dallenmeyer. Juggle. Earlier today, Portland races past Minnesota United. 4-2 tally there. Florian Monzon with a brace. A Six-minute goal. Sent the Timbers on their way. Yesterday, it was... Austin winning 3-0 over Real Mar Monarchs. Daniel Rodriguez a brace. And in the late game, it was Whitecaps 2 and Sporting Kansas City 2 drawing at 1 before Whitecaps won it. 5-4 in penalties. Here's a good turn. LAFC 2 looked very comfortable early in this match here at home. Does it translate to a goal? Very nice switch of fields. Romero. That Yoha was trying to continue his run. The pass from Ordaz showcased that, but he fell down. And the counter on. And plenty of space forward for the team in orange. Slamming on the brakes, Van der Kust. Now in space. Played out wide, Endoy. Endoy to the touchline. From his backside, the pass to the middle and a shot block. Endoy with a terrific pass to the top of the 18. Now space opening up. Endoy was trying to continue his run, but good defensive work. Shuts that play down from Romero. Henry Gonzalez had the shot. On the initial pass. Juarez throws it in. And now LAFC2 can get back into its shape. Dynamo Dos have been great. In the first half, nine first half goals, but only one of those have come in the opening quarter hour. Very balanced overall group in terms of their scoring. They've been great on the road as well. They've scored 11 of their 18 goals this season. Away from Lone Star State. C2 had a good chunk of the possession. It's now in Dynamo Dos. Holding on to it. Six players this season for Houston have scored multiple goals. It shows that the team is not one dimensional. With between the lines, direct passes to wingers. It's not easy to score goals, but a credit to the guys. What Kenny Bundy had to say about that. Endoy the target. Once again, Romero tested, but has the right answer. And ignites a pass forward for Christian Torres. Ordaz. Cuts around a defender. Ordaz using that big body. 
chips it. Gets cleared. Houston struggling to get the ball all the way out and concedes possession back to the home side. Once again, Vanderkust stepping in front. A native of Holland, 21 years of age. He's covered a lot of ground on that left back position. And once again, comes away with the interception. Here's Bat Yoha, has or does. The defense recovers. Jaime wide. Always a little bit of a speculative try from outside of the eight seed. This portion of the match is brought to you by BMO. in the 17th minute. We're scoreless here at Titan Stadium between LAFC 2 and Houston Dynamo 2. With our entire crew, I'm Michael Watrain. Great to have you on board for this one this evening. The nightcap of a MLS Next Pro doubleheader on a Saturday. Hold up play by Gonzalez. Evans, Maples. Gonzalez plays Endoy through. And who was the last to touch this one? It knocked the linesman's flag out of his hand. It comes to LAFC two. Good turn by Ordaz, who's been hectic early, but he fouls Marana. And Michael Zapata has a conversation with the young 18-year-old attacker. Ordaz had 17 appearances in the USL Championship last season with Las Vegas. This ball swept away. We enter the 19th minute of action so far. Three total shots, none on frame so far. Haven't asked questions of Dynamo Dosa's keeper Valdez or LAFC 2's keeper, Holy Lot. This is excellent dribbling through two defenders. Very ambitious strike from way outside of the box. Sam Polilat, second round pick of LAFC in the 2023 MLS Super Draft, top 60 overall selection. Played collegiately at New Hampshire. Endoy can't make contact. Romero charges forward. Green grass in front of him. Torres slowed his run down. Now he's able to track it down. Torres working along the line, goes down, corner kick. First one of the match coming up. Near the 20th minute. It'll be LAFC two with the first real opportunity. It will be Ordaz that will hit this ball. LAFC 2 looking to hit the board first as this ball won by Houston, but a foul whistled. Couldn't get past the first man in orange. Houston Dynamo's first team is in action. right now against St. Louis. And it is St. Louis City leading it 2-0. Goal in the ninth minute, more in the 51st minute. Dynamo Dos looking to have different fortunes here today. Dynamo will take on Chicago on Tuesday. Game will be at 
7.30 in the central time zone. This ball barely gets back to Marana. Excellent ball forward, well weighted. Juarez over one teammate. On all the way out, Evans able to bring it to the ground. Marana again, right through the middle of the yard. A lot of space in that pocket. Juarez. Gonzalez took a shot on and it's covered. By Coley Lott. This is as good of a buildup as Dynamo Dos have had. Let's see Gonzalez gets to the left foot, bends it in, but Coley Lott coolly covers. And a foul whistled. And Dynamo Dos will get their opportunity each side with a couple shots here early. That was the first one on frame. Forcing the save. And off of the free kick. Marana steps backward, the 22 year old. 22 of 23 matches with Dynamo Dose last year. These two teams find goal scoring chances. That's the question that Enrique Duran has talked about. At length, trying to figure out who's going to step up. Believes that the team continues to progress in the right direction. And the biggest goal is to get players that will eventually be able to play with the first team. As Vanderkust is whistled for the foul. Believes that the results are to come over the next few weeks. Can they capitalize on moments like these? They've been shut out four times. Have just six goals this season. Free kick coming. And they'll be taking quickly. Michael Zapato is not ready yet. Now he is. That might have to change the strategy here for LAFC2. This ball is punched in, and it's the second time off of a set piece in which LAFC2 haven't carried the ball far enough. That Yoha took the initial ball, now sends it back. Ordaz. A lot of space here, swings it. Crisosimo chips it. And it does get cleared away. Second ball from Crisostomo. Nice header forward. The break is on here for Houston. Endoy will crash into the box. He's the target of the pass. Plenty of black jerseys get back into the area to clear that one. Great scramble defense there, and eventually Jaime was able to carry it out. 25th minute of action, scoreless contest so far. Great to have you on board this evening on MLSNextPro.com. Scoreless so far between two teams that met roughly six weeks ago, played to a draw before Dynamo Dos cruised in PKs, 4-1. Very nice turn by Avila. This pass gets intercepted down the field, recovering the second ball, Jaime. Juarez bounces it off of Ordaz. This portion of the match is brought to you by Flex. It's what's next.
Avila, Ordaz, Romero, Ayoha. This game does have a pretty nice tempo and pace here early. Now does it lead to goal scoring chances? Dallenmeyer. Houston tired of waiting. Starts to press forward, and this one goes all the way back. The Coley lot. Going to be asked to play the ball a couple times. Into space comes Christostomo. And this pass well out of reach of Ordaz and Valdez. He was given up seven goals so far this season. Mo's last loss came 27 days ago. One nothing at Whitecaps two. One of the two times they've been shut out this year. The other time was against LAFC two. But they won that one in PKs. They get the extra point. Vanderkust. Displayed a great deal of wheels and does so here, pulling away from defender. But Evans, the intended target, never sees the ball. Sostomo steps in to intercept. Ordaz with a fine turn. One more defender than he'd like. Torres comes away with it. And the defense from Dynamo Dos flawless in that exchange. Until that pass that concedes possession. And LAFC 2 gets some numbers forward. In a scoreless game so far here in the 29th minute. We have a first half goal in us. Ordaz, Jaime. Pretty good pass in a tight space against two defenders. But the defense again for Houston. Able to evade trouble and then draw a foul. And a quick restart. Gaines. Pivots around, does well to get past one defender. Gains into the box, he goes down. Nothing there, according to Michael Zapata. Hendercuss came back, and there is a foul that time. LAFC2 thought that that one was clean, but instead this is going to warrant a yellow card. And it's the second given, LAFC2 player. This time it's Christian Torres at the 30 minute mark. So Torres sees yellow. It's interesting talking with Enrique Duran, coached in the USL Championship last year. As you take another look at this run, Gaines gets bumped by Vanderkust. Zapata, you can see, he's right there. And he didn't see anything. And that led to the initial argument. Torres was making his thoughts known, but to no avail. As I was saying, the difference between coaching in the USL Championship and MLS Next Pro. Last year said that he had young players, but this year it's a completely different situation trying to develop all of these young players. Knows that the players will make mistakes, but their willingness to learn has been excellent. Last season there was a mix of youth and experience. This year it's all youth. So rather than being able to pay attention to a select few, this year it is a whole roster full of them. Stands that he doesn't get that consistency of the same roster on a week-over-week -week basis. Three different players 
on this week's roster. But the great things about this league is you get to see these players from a young age develop and grow, eventually contribute with the first team. And as this league continues to develop, you'll see these players on a global scale. Three second minute of a scoreless game here early. Michael Watrang with you. Watching it on a Saturday evening. Hope you're having a nice night wherever you may be. This portion of the match is brought to you by Postmates. One of these two sides pushing a goal before the break. Good interception initially by Gaines, but can't hold on to it. Vandercust. A lot of touch touches for Houston inside of the 18-yard box. Granted, 22nd minute. Here Gonzalez at Houston's best chance, hooking a left-footed shot from just inside of the chalk. In the waiting arms of Cole Lott. Endoy was the target here. That pass a little too tight for Endoy to track it down. And now here comes Jaime in company for LAFC2. This is the first, or check that, the second in a string of four consecutive inside of the friendly confines. It was a 1 1 draw against Tacoma. In the last match, as luck would continue to have it, Lawson PKs sacrificed that extra point. Flag should stay down here. Excellently timed run by Jaime. Has to send it backwards to Gaines. That Yoha into space for Romero. Cristostomo. It blocked that Yoha. Pressure here from LAFC two mounting. And another rejection. Endoy trying to change the field as he forces the pressure. Nolan Meyer has to retreat. That ball has well too much on it. Trickle out of play harmlessly. Fifth minute of a scoreless game here early. Well, Kenny Bunny admitted that this has been a condensed month for the club with the U.S. Open Cup as well going on for the team. But one thing that he said is it's a good problem to have because the number one thing that Houston is trying to develop as a roster, as an organization, is that mentality of winning. To make it a habit. Houston sitting fifth in the Western Conference right now here in MLS Next Pro. Unbeaten in their last three. Juarez can't get there in time. Jaime does well. These two sides very evenly matched here at the outset of this one. Which team comes up with a difference maker? August. Juarez back for August. Tries to pick out a large switch of play, but instead headed up. And Ortaz. A lot of reinforcements around him, but as he pivots, he does pick out a couple runners forward. Gaines. He's a teammate well offside. But continues to carry. Gaines eventually. It's tripped up, Marana, and here's a very dangerous opportunity coming for LAFC2. Oh, 
was terrific by Gaines. The balance, the skill. Setting up LAFC2 with a very good opportunity to push something in. Daz that is on top of it. Nathan Ortez hits the wall. Comes back out. Pat Yoha sends it all the way through, and it's plucked out of there by Valdez. First shot on frame for LAFC2. Whistles through the penalty area. And the attack is on now for Dynamo Dose. All the way down the field. It is Gonzalez into the box and nearly a bicycle kick try right there. Maples. Or check that, that was Soto rather. Here's another look at that. Lengthy run for Diego Gonzalez. And Soto, he did well just to get a piece of it. He's always going to go high. Gonzalez, a player that has been through the academy. He's been with the first team on the bench at times. And Coach Kenny Bundy said, Gonzalez is a prime reason why this league exists. Give him quality playing time as well as the experience of playing with the first team training. Getting a chance to learn from game action. 39th minute. Do we get a goal here before halftime? Juggles. Evans has it slide through his legs. Bat Yoha. Plenty of room in the middle. Jaime. Jaime! Too high this time around, but that was a pretty good look. And well struck by Jaime as well. Here's another glance at it. Look at how much space he has. That is way out there. Just couldn't get that ball to dip at the right time. to appreciate the aggressiveness at this point in the match. Seven shots for LAFC2, a team that has scored just six times this season. Two of those six have come in the opening half. And then the theme that Enrique Duran mentioned, to be able to score more frequently, you have to score earlier. game a little bit. The pressure that side has felt at times. Just one win, but that win coming on May 21st. At Real Monarchs, can they get their first win of the year at home today? They have not won at home. The only team in MLS next pro not to do so, and out of the 27 teams, 18 have won twice or more already. Gaines. Just looking to funnel that one in. A couple options there and threw it right through the middle. Jaime, excellent slide tackle. Matt Yoha, the benefactor. Here's Ordaz. And a sliding stop by Valdez and a corner kick coming up. Los Angeles getting aggressive with a shot taking. There is the attempt from outside of the box by Jaime. Valdez called into action on this one from Ordaz.
Corner kick, Kate taken back for Bat Yoha. Into the box and a deflection from Dallenmeyer. Why this time? But things building here for the home side at Titan Stadium. 42nd minute. Scoreless so far in this match. Take a look at this corner kick taken. Dallenmeyer got a good space. It was always going to be a tough finish based on the angle and the location of where that ball was with a 6-6 defender. The opportunity is continuing to grow here for LAFC2. And here's another one. Bat Yoha thought he got taken down illegally. Michael Zapata does not agree. Houston having to battle here down the stretch of the opening. 45 minutes. Well, a Houston team that has scored nine first half goals. Look to open things up here. Endoy. Excellent weighted ball. Endoy. Two defenders on him. Takes an attempt. Might have been a pass that gets ricocheted towards the frame and it gets saved. Coley Elot. To handle it. Ordaz. A lot of space forward. Ordaz gains, has options. Gains gets it back. Crosses it in! A shot high. Christian Torres, his second real good opportunity in the match. Doesn't take a deflection and just goes high. Here it is again. Great combination play, Ortez. It gains. Torres. Really difficult to try to bring that all the way back around on frame. Entertaining first half. Hope you're enjoying it as well here on MLS NextPro.com. Nil nil between LAFC2 and Dynamo Dos. Michael Watrang with you, our entire crew, elated to have you on board with us. Winding down to the end of the first half. Valdez. Dynamo does have a build here before the end of the first half. Are they just going to be happy to get into the locker room at 0-0? Zero, zero. They've been outshot 9-4 in the match. And Los Dos, or check that, LAFC 2. Looking to break through here. Torres. Jaime. Pocket of space, Chrysostomo, Torres, Romero. It's been a confident LAFC2 team. Haven't lost in 34 days, looking for their second win of the season. They send it all the way backwards. Golilat. It's a good turn there from Chrysostomo. Jaime, excellent work to win the first ball. Jaime played it through, Chrysostomo. Just couldn't hold on to it long enough. Gaines can't control. One minute of stoppage time in the first half. Fine work defensively. Long range missiles. Locked down. And now Dynamo Dos just looking to Get through the next 30 seconds after that flurry. It's been a great first half for LAFC2. The only thing missing, a goal to show for it. And we should have the final say here of the first half. Maybe 15 seconds left. Michael Zapata looks at the watch. Here's a ball into the box. Torres. Nobody continued to make that run into space. He was arguing that. 
Gaines and Ordaz got mixed up on who should take over. And the whistle blows for the end of the first half. And an entertaining opening 45 minutes. It was 10 shots to four in favor of LAFC two. But nothing to show for it for either side in the opening 45 here at Titan Stadium. The score at the break, Los Angeles zero, Houston zero. Major League Soccer and RCX Sports have launched MLS Go, a groundbreaking recreational soccer program. Boys and girls aged four to 14 can now experience a fun, affordable, and local soccer journey. This fall, MLS Go debuts in 18 markets, expanding access to the sport. You can go to MLSGo.com for more info. Scoreless here at the break. We will have highlights and stats from our first half coming up. But first, let's take a look back at a busy match day 10. Michelle and Samara take us through it in this week's edition of Match Day Rewind. What's up, guys? It's Michelle Montaigne and Samara Perez. We're recapping some of the biggest storylines from one of the biggest match days of MLS Next Pro so far this season. Up first is the coming out party for North Texas SC's Diego Pepe. The younger brother of USMNT star Ricardo Pepe notched his first career goal on Sunday. The 18-year-old scored the equalizer versus City 2 just two minutes after being subbed in. His goal helped NTX extend their unbeaten streak to five games. Diego also converted on his kick from the spot in the shootout. El Trenecito spoke after the game on his impact off the bench and said, quote, Every time Coach Javi gives me the opportunity to come into the match, I set myself with the mentality that I need to score. I am happy that I was finally able to score my first professional goal, end quote. As for another solo standout for match day 10, well, we have to talk about LA Galaxy 2's Aaron Bibu. He helped us kick off the full slate of matches with a goal in LA Galaxy 2's 3-2 loss to MNUFC 2. He then one-upped his own performance with a brace in Galaxy 2's nightcap that eventually resulted in a shootout win for the home side against Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. With his three goals across the match day, he has now moved into a tie for first place in the Golden Boot standings with seven on the season. He currently shares the top spot with Rapids 2's Yosuke Hanya and following closely behind in a five-way tie for second with six goals, are Diago Pacheco, Jack Lynn, Archimedes Ordonez, Yuri Tavares, and Paul Vidal. Speaking of Hania and Rapids 2, the team reached a major MLS Next Pro milestone this weekend. Eric Boucher's squad reached a 10-game undefeated record, tying the 2022 streaks of Toronto FC 2 and Dynamo 2. They extended their unbeaten streak to nine in the shootout win over North Texas SC on Thursday, then tied the league record with the 4-1 win over MNUFC 2. It's also noteworthy to mention that this past week, Academy player Connor Miller netted his first professional goal and midfielder Yosuke Hania played a full 45 minutes with the first team, something he's hoping to make permanent. Yeah, this is great. Great feeling, you know. Like I said, uh, playing playing in front of uh, in front of a lot of fans means a lot to me. Uh, especially, I'm a second team player right now. Uh, still trying to get a get to the first team, you know. So uh, really happy to play a decent amount of minutes. So I just want to keep it going. And speaking of streaks, New England Revolution 2 is quietly on a four-game win streak of their own. After starting out the season with three straight wins, Revs 2 suffered a four-game winless stretch, but they certainly appear to be back in form now. Match Day 10 saw Revolution 2 shut out Crew 2 for only the second time this season before turning around and doing the same thing to enter Miami CF2. Revs 2 is now second place in the East and is in a tie with Samara's highlighted Rapids 2 for most goals in the league with 27. 
The double fixture weekend featured lots of thrilling moments. You can visit MLSNextPro.com to catch all of the highlights. Michelle and I will see you again soon. Time between LAFC 2 and Dynamo Dose scoreless here. Now let's shine a light on the best that weekday 10 had to offer as Michelle takes us into the spotlight. Hey guys, it's Michelle with MLS Next Pro. With so many extra games on match day 10, this week's spotlight honorees really had to shine, but they did. Kicking us off is the MLS Next rising star of Match Day 10. It's none other than New York City FC's Alexander Yagudayev. The 16-year-old youngster made his professional debut in the club game against Toronto FC 2, posting five saves, one of which was a PK save during regulation that ended up being the game winner. He then got the nod three days later against FC Cincinnati 2, where he solidified this week's off. As for the player of match day 10, that has to go to Union 2's Jeremy Raffanello. The 23-year-old notched three goals, two of which came in just two minutes in Union 2's comeback win over Columbus Group 2. His hat trick proved to be the difference maker and was the only three-goal single-game performance of the match day. The best goal of match day 10, that belongs to Remy Cabral of the top team in the West, Colorado Rapids 2. It really should belong to him and his teammate, Oliver Laraz, who set up Cabral beautifully with a long curled assist to the perfect spot. From there, Cabral took over with a man on. He chipped the ball right over the MNU FC 2 keeper and into the back of the net, earning 49% of the vote for best goal. And rounding out the 23-game Match Day 10 honorees, the best team goes to New England Revolution 2. He had to go to the team who posted back-to-back -back home wins to move into second place in the East. The two victories make it four consecutive wins in a row while ending Crew 2's four-game win streak. And maybe most impressive for the New England squad, both wins came without their two leading goal scorers, Esmir Bayraktarovic and Damian Rivera. A very full week of games, a very deserving list of spotlight honorees. We'll see you back here soon. Scoreless at halftime between LAFC 2 and Houston Dynamo 2. Samara had a chance to catch up with Austin's Cristovella for an informative discussion. Let's meet the young forward. Hola amigos de MLS Next Pro, los saluda Samara Pérez. Hoy tenemos el gusto de platicar con Cristo Vela, jugador juvenil mexicano que defiende la playera de Austin FC2. Cristo, bienvenido y gracias por acompañarnos el día de hoy. Hola, muchas gracias a ustedes. Cristo, estamos muy contentos de poder platicar contigo y poder conocerte un poco más a fondo. Primero, nos gustaría saber cómo fue ese proceso para llegar a Austin FC2. Pues la verdad, estaba yo en mi anterior equipo en Cancún y creo que Sean, en ese entonces, trabajador de aquí, pues fue a ver un partido de allá del equipo y ahí fue donde me vio y donde preguntó pues al club por mí y ya de ahí fueron pues negociando y todo y a mí me gustó mucho la idea de venir acá y pues al final se dio gracias a Dios. Trying to hit this from distance, spilled in front, it's over the line, Austin will win it, Cristo Vela cleans up the scraps and takes all three points for Austin FC. Cristo, ¿y qué diferencias encuentras entre la Liga de Expansión MX y MLS Next Pro? Pues la verdad, las dos son muy competitivas, o sea, las dos son diferentes, pero, pero tienen muy buen nivel y me han gustado mucho estar en las dos. Y esto, siento que me estoy adaptando apenas al, a lo diferente que es acá. Oye, Cristo, ¿y qué tanto influyó tu papá Alejandro Vela para que tú fueras futbolista? No, pues yo creo que 
yo creo que todo porque desde chiquito yo iba a verlo y a sus entrenamientos y yo creo que ahí fue donde me empezó a gustar y a apasionar pues, el fútbol. Cristo, tu papá fue jugador profesional y tu tío Carlos sigue activo. ¿Qué significa para ti representar el apellido Vela? Pues para mí es un orgullo y, y la verdad pues yo estoy muy, muy contento de lo que han logrado ellos pero yo estoy haciendo mi camino y no trato de compararme con ellos, pero, pero me enorgullece tener ese apellido. ¿Y cuáles son tus metas con Austin FC2? Pues mis metas yo creo que son quedar campeones aquí con el equipo, este, aportar a, a llegar a, a ese campeonato con goles, con asistencias, trabajando y yo creo que quedar campeón es nuestro, bueno, mi mayor objetivo aquí. ¿Qué ha sido lo más difícil que has enfrentado en esta temporada? Pues yo creo que mi lesión porque estuve cuatro partidos fuera y apenas estoy regresando de ella y yo creo que también como el adaptarme a un nuevo país, a un nuevo torneo, una nueva cultura, yo creo que eso ha sido lo más complicado, pero yo creo que cada día me siento más este, adaptado y, y bien recibido por mis compañeros. Platicábamos antes de que llevas tres meses en Austin. ¿Cómo has afrontado todo esto que mencionas? Pues bien, yo nada más vengo aquí a, a trabajar y a entrenar y a cumplir nuestros, nuestros objetivos, pese a todas las circunstancias que pueda haber. Y platícanos acerca de cuál es tu mayor sueño como futbolista profesional. Pues yo creo que jugar con la selección mexicana, un mundial, jugar en Europa y tener una carrera allá en, en Europa. Cristo, bueno, también preparamos unas preguntas rápidas donde vas a responder lo primero que te venga a la mente. ¿Estás okay. listo? Sí. Esta va a ser una dinámica divertida. Ok, primera. Ídolo de fútbol. Messi. ¿Por qué? Porque es el mejor de todos los tiempos. <ríe> Muy buena. Ok. ¿Un estadio en el que te gustaría jugar? En el Camp Nou. ¿Jugador con el que mejor te llevas en Austin FC2? Con David y con Eric y Alfonso. ¿Y qué tal tu inglés del 1 al 10? Yo creo que un 7. ¿Qué es lo que más extrañas de México? La comida y a mi familia. ¿Qué comida en específico? Tortas ahogadas. ¿Y cuál es tu comida favorita de Estados Unidos? Chick-fil-A. ¿Un talento oculto que nadie sepa de ti? Los videojuegos. Bueno, un videojuego. Y por último, completa esta frase. En una palabra, Cristo Vela como jugador es... Apasionado. Bueno, Cristo, te agradecemos mucho por tu tiempo y estamos muy emocionados por ver tu crecimiento aquí en MLS Next Pro. No, gracias a ustedes. Bueno, gracias a todos por sintonizar. Nos vemos en la próxima. I'm here at Titan Stadium, LAFC 2 in Dynamo Dos, deadlocked at nil-nil as you take a look at the scores from around the weekend so far. Orlando City beat 3-2 victors over Red Bulls 2 on Friday. Austin 2, 3-0 win behind a brace from David Rodriguez. Whitecaps 2 and SKC 2 play to a tie in regulation. Whitecaps get the extra point, winning 5-4 in PKs. Earlier today, Timbers 2 beating Minnesota United 2-4-2 behind a brace from Florian Monzon. And tomorrow, Eight more matches on the docket, and it starts at 2 o'clock. Columbus Crew and Chicago Fire, two, and wraps up at 8.30 at night with North Texas and Los Dos. From this match so far, we run you through some of the halftime highlights of this contest. This came very early in the game. Off of this corner kick attempt, it was a foul whistled, but there were several of those chances from this LAFC 2 team. This was Yair Gonzalez in the 22nd minute, firing one on from just inside of the eight seed. Kolilat cleans it up pretty steadily off of the one hop. 
Here, Ordaz hits the wall, but the second opportunity from uh, Batyoha Valdez able to clear it up. And then this charge forward on a cross in. Would always have to be a flawless finish, but Soto just couldn't get enough to it to be able to pause and reset. And then this, a great chance from well outside of the box. Jaime in the 39th minute. Ordaz coming here in the 41st minute. Put it on frame, forced to save from Valdez. And there was one more crack at it here off of a corner. This ball would be pummeled in. Nolan Meyer just did get a piece of it. And this was a just a terrifically delightful play from LAFC 2. Torres sent it wide in the 44th minute. And that's why at this point we sit at a nil-nil draw as the two sides really did a great job of opening this game up. It was an entertaining nil-nil effort between these clubs in that first half, but a lot of shots being peppered on frame by LAFC2, 11 shots overall, expected goals of 0.46, but only four of those 11 shots came from inside of the box. So they were taking some speculative attempts from outside of the box in the opening 45 minutes. So what happens here in half number two? Do we get a winner or do we need to go to penalties? LAFC two looking for its first home win of the season. The only team in MLS Next Pro without a victory. Dynamo Dose looking to run its unbeaten string to four in a row. We are ready to kickstart half number two. Yoha slung down the sideline. It will be a corner and a great start to half number two here. LAFC made a couple changes. Brian Ayubi, who will take this corner, is into the match. He replaces Chrysostomo. He will take this corner. Pelts it in to the middle of the box. It's headed away. Second balls have been the best chances for LAFC2. Jaime charges into the box. And it goes out for a goal kick. The other change. Yukesan Suba replaces Ordaz in the lineup. And then on the Houston side, it is Isaiah LaFleur Replacing Vanderkust. Several halftime changes. Gains the target of this ball. Suba in there as well, the 19-year-old from Raleigh, North Carolina. And a foul whistled. Lot comes out to pick it up. First start of the season for Cole Lot. This 
ball pelted this near sideline and it will go out of play before Diego Rosales can track it down. and get into this game. Andy Bundy talked about the challenges that his group have had throughout this season. And one of the keys to the recent success is taking advantage of the opportunities that they created. They haven't had a ton in this one. We're looking to create those here in half number two. Number 21. Number 27. Number 22. Brian Lott. Mentioned played at New Hampshire. Treating and miss hitting that ball with Suba. We'll have the patience to be able to track it down eventually. Attempts that LAFC were able to tally in that first half. Good sign for this team that has just scored six times this year. As they came in to this match, towards the bottom of the league in shot attempts. Here's Endoy. Coley Lott with a big save. And a foul whistle. Endoy. One of the better chances in this match for Houston. Coley Lott had to make a good save. Here's another glance at it. Look at Endoy. Great speed to get there. That's a well weighted pass. Coley Lott, I'm sure, would have preferred to catch that, but. FC2, 116 shots entering this match in the bottom six of the league in the category. And there's a foul whistled on Dynamo Dos. Leading shot maker is onto the pitch in Suba. Six shots on target. This year has a goal. To the potency perhaps. Growing even more with the change. Here's Endoy once more. Endoy. Goes back post, and this one's well over everybody and out for a goal kick. Last week against Austin, it was an early goal that set the stage for this Dynamo Dose group. Kenny Bundy said that they had the freedom, knowing that they had that goal already. He said it was ironic, and, and this is something that's been fascinating about Houston of late. Suba, Suba, Gaines, Julian Gaines. Is there a foul spotted? There is not. Gaines thought that there was one as he's still down in the box. Fans making their voices heard as well. And no foul given.
Michael Zapata. Confident in the decision that he made. Here it is again. Gaines starts left, comes back right. Is there anything there? He definitely made contact. Fans not happy with the call. And so the point that I was making about Houston, they were creating so many chances at the beginning of the year. But now they might be creating maybe slightly less. But a yellow card shown to the LAFC two bench. Be shown in the 54th minute. And now that they're producing maybe slightly less, that's when they've been maybe more potent. The quality of chances have grown for Houston. Endoy. Endoy! High and wide. He's showing his danger. Eight goals in MLS Next Pro in the last two years. Three this season, the team leader. This is the ability that he has. He drives that ball with the left foot. Looking for it to curl. Never did so. Rosales, Enrique Duran, very complimentary of him. I don't know if he'd be a part. Holding along the Left sideline here. Throw in. Missed time. With and a goal kick coming. Watching with our entire crew. Enjoyable to watch in this one. Saturday. out of play by Romero. Well, one thing that Enrique Duran told me is that there's little challenges that he provides his players on a week over week basis. Sometimes that they're condensed in what he asks of his group. Maybe it's not something massive. Example that he gave is how many challenges are defenders making in the air? Can you win those? Can you be aggressive? And that proves a positive day on the pitch. I think a lot of boxes have been checked for LAFC 2 in this one, but plenty of time left. Elusive goal for both sides. Evans, Endoy, flags up for offside. It's picked up by Coley Lott regardless. Coley Lott, going in Dubai. As this ball's played through the middle, Coley Lott can't get there. It beats him. Houston scores. Dynamo Dos have a 1 0 edge. Oh, 
Well, it's right off of a restart. And the mistake made, Dolan Meyer through the middle. There's nobody there. And a perfectly weighted ball through the middle. And it is Diego Gonzalez with his fifth goal of the season, nestling at home. Kenny Bundy was extremely complimentary on Gonzalez. He scores his third goal in the last two matches and now has five in his last nine. Turnover. Mistake made. Just the 11th goal allowed this season by LAFC2. Can't hold on to it long enough to make a charge. 60th minute here. Dynamo Dos have surged down in front looking for their third win in the last four. Watching, watching this one with you. Great to have you on board. 30 more minutes to go. AFC2, the only team in the league that has not won at home this season. They find themselves behind. Gonzalez, one of the most consistent players on Dynamo Dose, according to his coach. And a year of being a backup and develop, and boy, has he paid dividends this year. Endoy. This ball will be booted all the way across. In and out. Picked up by Yair Gonzalez. August on a wide switch. Dynamo Dos, seven shots, three on target. One of the matters right now, Diego Gonzalez's is goal of the season, rising up the league charts in that category. Boy, does Houston look like a different club here in the second half. After was LAFC two. Firmly on the front foot in the opening half. Los Angeles has not attempted a shot yet here in the second 45. Endoy, excellent overlapping run. Endoy just couldn't get back to it as Juarez was trying to pick him out. That Yoha. No gains. Tame it.
Haynes is off. Dustin Nagiri comes on. Back in this revamp top line, LAFC 2 provide a goal. That Yoha. It is a clean win by August. Jaime. Oh, handball spotted by Zapata. That Yoha takes. Eyeing a leveler. 25th minute. That Yoha. He went low. Fouled that. Ground. Dolan Meyer taken out. Soto shown. Here's Aguirre. Rosales.
there. Eight points behind Colorado Rapids, which continues its onslaught of terrific play. Matching Tanamodosa's 10 match on beaten string from a year ago. This portion of the match is brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. Pick it up. For the spin here from Evans. Salas. Endoy. Enough, long enough, but it does come back to Juarez. is coming. Joe Farouz replaces Zeke Soto in the 11th. Dalvaros. Farouz, 17 years old. Raised in Houston. Farouz. 72nd minute. Houston with a 1-0 edge. To secure the three points and move up a slot in the Western Conference standings. There. Punches it in. It's cleared away initially. August. Here's a long range effort. It actually does take a deflection. The back line player, but holy lot. Gets to it before it goes any further. Bulls continue to be at a strong premium for LAFC 2. Fewest goals scored in the league with six entering the weekend. San Jose and Real Monarchs, nine are the next fewest. Evans, nice touch for it. Endoy hustling. Holy lot gets to it first. Despite running into his teammate. Another look. Look at that run from Endoy. This pass is deflected. Farouz the target. But Holy Lot does extremely well to maintain grasp of it despite ramming into his teammate. Here's a push ball in looking for Suba. LFC has been blanked four times this year. In nine matches, looking to avoid a fifth shutout. And uh, will be called for the foul. About a quarter hour to go in this one.
challenge continues to grow. Scored just three times in four home matches. Two losses, two draws here at home this season. Endoy, Evans, space out wide for Ayer Gonzalez. Evans, does he elect to go? Evans, nicely slid forward. take 11 shots. Best halves this season, but it never ended with a goal. FC2 will make a change. Fusmaya. Portion of the match is brought to you by Remily, the official global money transfer partner of LA FC. What the fuck? Keep on playing! <laughs> that Yoha, excellent play to maintain possession and balance. Flies it into the box. Well behind Suba. Slam on the brakes. Inside. See the desire to push forward now. Really FC2, but it does leave them a little bit exposed. That Doy. Great energy. He has options. Does take a swing from long range. Ball flowed in. Ricochet around, still loose. Leg up for offside. As Maroos came back from an offside slot to get that ball. First half, but Houston attempt just four shots. They have been on the front foot here in the second half. To a 2 0 edge. Five shots to three advantage in the second half. They've scored on two of their three on target. Swinging ball in, and Geary gets ahead to it. Suba keeps it in play on the line. 
Suba. Fine move. Uses the body. Flicks it in. Valdez catches, however. Valdez is six feet, six inches tall. Long wingspan as well. Trying to get that ball over the top of him was always going to be a tough ask. Suba frustrated because he had a couple options behind. Two second half goals leads 2 0. Thanks for tuning in this evening. I'm Michael Watring and our entire crew. Delighted to have you on board. Foul whistle, but no card given. The FC's been assessed three of them. Salas Torres and an assistant coach. Business at home, come away with points. And barring a big comeback. Kind of a possible 15 points. The FC2 will have just two here on its home pitch. Well, AFC fans. Eyeing tomorrow's CONCACAF Champions League final, needing a good performance down 2-1 on aggregate against Club, Club Leon. Enjoy the last to touch. It should be a goal kick, and indeed it is. Spot 2023 and 2025 FIFA Club World Cup on the line. FC will try to use that late stunner that momentum try to win those precious spots that's the first team but the second team right now you see another yellow card displayed Armando Avila is shown yellow here in the 82nd minute. Two nil. Houston out in front and we're ready to restart. Michael Zapata brings it back. Endoy taken away. Yuri get there in time. But now gets possession off of a turnover. An idea. Caesar struggling to get those passes right. Now here is a giveaway. Jaime Suba Suba swings the leg, gets it blocked. I'm again. Maya. Two. Work, work, work. Gotta find one. 
next few moments to make this late push to try to draw level. Down 2-0. Ball sent along Suba. Nick staying down. Just got to get that first touch to be able to swing a shot in. Maya, 18 year old Brazilian. Rosales. And there there is a foul. A set piece coming for LAFC, too. And Yair Gonzalez will be shown yellow. Another look at it. Late challenge. The Suba. <laughs> now it'll be Ayumi. Bayoha. Big moment here for LAFC 2, down 2 0. And they capitalize on a set piece. This ball in for my UB. Valdez climbs the ladder, makes the catch, and smothers. And now things getting a little chippy. Valdez took exception to a body bump that Yoha comes in to have some words as well. And the players are the ones sorting this out as Michael Zapata has not stepped in yet. Thing this benefits Houston. They'll gladly take the time bleeding off the clock. Play ball, right? Come on. Mali comes in, Christian Torres comes out for LAFC 2. Mali from Mali. 21 years of age, forward. Has a couple goals this season. Los Angeles needs one. As quickly as they can get it to try to make this a mad dash to the finish line. Joiner Castillo comes in, replacing Jair Gonzalez for Houston as well. 20-year-old from Honduras. Two nil. Houston out in front. 59th minute goal from Diego Gonzalez. 75th minute goal from Papa Endoy. Here he is with possession. Endoy. A corner out of it. Houston have been the better side in the second half. LAFC 2 had a great first half. 11 shots, but it took them 20 minutes to get their first shot of the second half. Falling into a 1 0 hole at that point. LaFleur, who set up the Endoy goal, doesn't hold on to this ball. It's played backwards by Castillo. Jeremy Mayoha was also given a yellow. In that last sequence, and here's an, another yellow as well. And frustration mounting even further. And 
Who is this one on? Is it a second yellow? Jaden Romero is walking off the pitch. Here's another look at it. There's the push. And there's a little bit of a shove. After the fact, there's yellow, and then a red card came out. LAFC well, two down to ten men. Comes here in the 90th minute. This ball flown into the box with a man advantage. Houston already with a couple goals. This ball chunked along. Suba will latch onto it. Down a man, LAFC two, trying to rescue at least one. And a foul whistle. Ellis, like he slipped more than anything, and instead gets whistled for the foul. And we will get five minutes of stoppage time in the second half. So Houston will have to see that out to get out of here with a victory. And this has been something that hasn't really worked out all that well for Houston this year. That is scoring first. Two and three. And they score first this season entering this match. And that was exactly to the point what Kenny Bunny was talking about. Get that first goal. Just can't add on to it. They've lost three times when scoring first this season. Maya. Jaime. And this ball booted into the seats. And it was last touched by Houston for a corner. Won a one goal game yet this season, 0 and 4. And this two goal differential a showcase of what they can do from an attacking perspective. This corner kick pelted. Nobody over there in a black jersey. It will be a switch of fields as Maya sends it in. FC2 really scrambling now just to try to get one. And with three more minutes to go, this thing. To wrap up, Endoy making the sprint. Yoha gets a clear header to it. This will be a match that will see LAFC 2 take 16 shots and more shots than Houston. 16 to 11 right now, but the accuracy different. 4 3 in terms of shots on target for Dynamo Dos. first home win will stay elusive two more shots to go but they don't get any easier after this one red hot Colorado coming to town in eight days sporting Kansas City two will be here on June 18th there's a sprint into the box for a moment by Castillo it does get cleared away more long hold string for LAFC2 coming in August. Roughly two more minutes to go. Endoy. And Evans play catch. Here's Evans. 
Houston, you really don't need to swing this in, but you do so anyway. Easily could have taken it to the corner flag. On the Houston side, conversely, trip to Minnesota. In eight days on the ledger. Going back home for Portland and San Jose. And they will sit in fourth place on the Western Conference table play tonight with eight matches to go tomorrow. That's a good turn here. Suba. Suba, one last ditch effort. Two defenders on him. To go back heel to Jaime. He didn't know where to go. Caught in between runs and a foul whistle. for a foul. Not sure how much more time we got left in this one. We've hit the minimum five minutes of stoppage time. And there is your final whistle. And Houston take it to Dell. They run their string to four consecutive unbeaten. And they take three points from LAFC two on the road. Second time that they've pulled out a victory overall against LAFC2 after winning in PKs earlier this season. Our man of the match presented by Adidas from Houston Dynamo 2. It is Diego Gonzalez sliding home what proved to be the game winner in the 59th minute as he scores goals in his third consecutive match and fifth in the last nine overall for the 19 year old from Houston, Texas. He is our man of the match, presented by Adidas. It is Dynamo Dos getting the victory. They get their fifth win of the season by a final score of 2-0 here from Titan Stadium. For our entire MLS Next Pro broadcast crew, I'm Michael Watre saying our final score. Dynamo Dos 2, LASC 2-0. Don't forget you can watch MLS Next Pro all season long at MLS Season Pass on Apple TV and MLSNextPro.com. Until next time, we say so long, everybody. This copyrighted broadcast of MLS Next Pro may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.